Hi, welcome back. Uh, so this is the beginning of specific tools uh, series videos and uh, this one uh, will be more on uh, continental gouges, uh, spindle gouges and um, which one you can use on balls and uh, on spindles, which one you don't want to use on balls because I, get, I did get a few questions asking why am I using a spindle gouge uh, where uh, on balls uh, where it's not to be recommended to, to be used so um, which I hope this will clarify and uh, explain a little bit more and uh, give you more of insight on what's going on with these uh, spindle gouges. Uh, now the, the next series will probably be on skew. Uh, it will probably be two or three part uh, because I want to put as much information and uh, my idea behind it is to uh, get rid of your fear of skew and uh, it's a, such a wonderful tool uh, but I'm still waiting on something to arrive in the mail and um, I hope uh, after all this video series you'll have more insight of how I use these tools, how I um, shape them, sharp, sharpen them and everything so hope that will help, help you out. And now to focus more on a continental spindle gouge. So this is the one I got from Crown. I've used and learned on a similar one, uh, this one here actually, uh, for years and um, this is a 20 mil wide. It's a continental spindle gouge because these are um, like, uh, let's say, forged from a flat piece of steel, let's say, and you have a tank here, uh, which is quite different from, let's say, your uh, more modern or, uh, let's say, regular uh, spindle gouge, which has a shaft, like so. Um, this is a detailed spindle gouge, but a uh, regular spindle gouge has a little bit deeper um, flute here but pretty much the same design uh, so uh, I started uh, when I started turning uh, around 17 years ago uh, spindle mostly spindles um, my mentor back then uh, at school was only using this kind of gouge and only had this one uh, which I managed to buy at a local uh, hardware store uh, it's a carbon steel so it's not much in terms of quality of the steel but uh, it serves me well for, for years, it was quite longer, but uh, I managed to use it only for spindles, uh, I didn't use it for balls much, um, however, uh, these were used extensively uh, for cross grain work as well. Uh, this one is a little bit bigger, uh, this is I believe 30 mil, let me just double check. Yeah, so that's uh, 30 mil or almost um, inch and a quarter a little less than that um, so this similar type of gouges were used extensively for uh, spindle work uh, but also uh, back in the day when they have to turn something cross-grained they would use uh, this kind of gouges uh, they didn't have before uh, this kind of a more modern let's say on the shaft uh, spindle gouges or ball gouges especially in this part of Europe um, Actually, I don't remember ever to see um, a ball gouge here uh, upon recently, maybe last five, maybe ten years. So you can imagine these were used quite extensively. So now I did get a few questions asking why did I use spindle gouges when um, that turner or that turner said uh, it's not to be used on cross grain work. Uh, so these gouges here, so a regular uh, spindle gouge with the shaft and these uh, continental ones here uh, can be used on cross grain work like bowls and uh, stuff like that. Uh, these uh, with the round sh shaft are much easier to use. Um, this one can be used as well. Uh, a smaller one like this is a little bit easier, let's say, to use versus uh, this one, much wider one, but I'll show you uh, why am I uh, going to use this one and uh, sharpen it and everything uh, but spindle gouge to not be used on any cross grain work um, where you face the end grain is this one here so this is the spindle uh, roughing gouge 
and uh, it still has a tang here much like uh, these two continental ones uh, however the the major problem with this one is the shape of the uh, the profile here uh, all together so if I place it like so you, you can see this is quite a deep U gouge now uh, this is excellent tool for um, roughing down spindle work so to get it from square to round this is excellent uh, because you're only facing the side grain portion of the spindle and you go um, from one end to another end and you're only facing the the side grain as soon as you present this to end grain and uh, all of this edge uh, are exposed to that end grain uh, it can get really really dangerous and uh, this is how turners get hurt uh, the ones who just started out they think this is gouge like any other and they grab it and uh, usually it comes uh, in a set of five or ten tools something like that um, usually they manufacturers always provide this kind of gouge and they think it's okay to use on the cross grain work which is not um, you can see here the major difference between these uh, continental spindle gouge let me try to to get it so you can see it a little bit better so you can see on the right the spindle roughing gouge and uh, on the left the sp continental spindle gouge so major major difference in terms of how deep the flute is and uh, with this one you can still have a, a quite a bit of catch a uh, nasty one if you're not careful especially this wide it's a little less and uh, uh, possible with uh, this one uh, which is narrower and maybe a little bit much better to use on bowls however I'm going to show you uh, how I use this one on bowls and on spindle work so um, so again do not mistaken uh, this gouge this spindle roughing gouge with deep uh, u-shaped flute uh, for cross grain work just be careful uh, this is excellent tool like I said for a spindle roughing down so to get it from square to round but not to be used on cross grain work so so you can see on this one here uh, it has a fingernail profile here and uh, this is great for um, uh, roughing down spindles which I use this one primarily or you can use it in this formation as a, a, for a bowl if you only have access like I, I did years ago uh, to only this kind of uh, gouge uh, then you're obviously going to use that one and uh, you just have to adapt the, uh, the the profile here of the cutter here so on this one you can see it's much more uh, square across not all the way square however uh, if you're going to use this one it's much more easier to get a catch because there is not much um, uh, wings are not as much far back on as on this one here so you can see side by side these are a little bit different so so the idea is to uh, what I'm going to do is extend the left and right wing a little bit further back like on a fingernail profile and uh, that way it will be much more usable and if you only have access to this kind of gouges then it's okay to use this on bowls just you have to be aware how you shape the profile how you use them and especially how you present uh, this gouge because it's much more prone to catches uh, versus the bow gouge or um, smaller on a shaft let's say uh, spindle gouge so like i said it, it hold uh, it holds a special place in in my arsenal and i like to keep it um, in my drawer and uh, whenever i have the opportunity to to use it so uh, let me get you on the grinder and uh, we'll set off on sharpening. Um, uh, I'll get a little bit more in angles and why I think it's not as crucial to have uh, a specific angle on your tools. Um, you'll see that in a skew video and how I go about um, making sure that I have a consistent uh, angle on skews. So on this one here, it's around 40 degrees. We can just 
check it so we're taking off the heel here hope you can see it so this is quite blunt angle for now so i'm going to uh, raise it to uh, around 40 degrees and uh, it's just keep it perpendicular to uh, the wheel and rock it from side to side and you want to have these sides um, straight like it was uh, cut away at 19 degrees Now, as I'm watching this, uh, these wings are actually a little bit more uh, forward, let's say. So, I will focus my attention a little bit more on uh, this portion here on the side. Here and here as well, so. But first, I want to get it, the bevel, up to the edge. So we're getting there, and just a little bit more, a little bit more. There we go, so that's now sharp, you can see nice consistent angle all the way around and uh, we're going to use that on the spindle work uh, now let's uh, sharpen this uh, detail gouge here so the way i would do it again uh, i'll focus more on spindle uh, gouges uh, this one on the shaft uh, the multiple grinds that I use, uh, different angles as well on a separate video, this is more on the continental ones but uh, I still want to sharpen it uh, quickly so I can show you uh, when we get to, to the lathe so again I'm holding in my hand I find the primary bevel rock it from side to side a little bit so you get nose nice and sharp there we go, and now I ro uh, rotate it and push it up the wheel. Up, down. There we go. So that's now sharp spindle gouge it has uh, multiple facets all the way around but you'll see in the at the lathe how nicely this will work so yeah so this one is uh, that one uh, with the finger nail profile which i'm just going to uh, lightly go over and uh, sharpen this and then we'll focus on the bigger one to change the profile so uh, here it's around 45 degrees nose angle First I find the heel and then slightly raise the handle and then I grind until I see the, the edge at the top change the color or in this case it will just spark over the, uh, the edge because this is the carbon tool. So again I roll and push it up the wheel, then push it down and up. Still a little here on the nose. There we go. So that's now um, fingernail fingernail profile, and you can see nice um, primary bevel up the top. The bottom portion I'm not concerned at all. So uh, you'll see this in action as well. And uh, now let's focus on this big one. So, so you can go uh, multiple ways. You can push it, uh, turn it upside down and push it up the wheel like so. And drop it down. That will start to give you, hope you can see it, 
more of a fingernail, fingernail profile. Uh, I want to extend, like I said, a little bit more the wings down, so you can go slightly more up, rock it back down, and you get sort of like this. You can see now this is much more of a fingernail profile, and uh, I find this way to work quite good. So all we now have to do is remove, uh, you can see this shiny portion all the way around. So this will take a while, but I'll show you the motion. Again, on the end, it's around 45 degree nose. And uh, when I push it up the wheel, I don't close it like so all the way. Uh, that will make the, these wings quite, uh, you'll see them here. Uh, it will look kind of weird um, and it won't work as, as well. So uh, I would roll it like so, close it, the, the flute, um, as much as I would use on, the, on a ball. So somewhere around here and somewhere around here but pushing up the wheel, so... Like I said, this will take a while. I roughed out on a coarse wheel. You can see it goes all the way around nicely. And uh, now what I want to do is refine the shape um, and get it to nice final uh, sharpness. Uh, but first I'm going to put a little, this is uh, 320 I believe, used cloth back paper and just polish up the flute inside a little bit more. There we go. So now just to get the final sharpness. So that's now ready to use continental spindle gouge. You can see nice little curves on the wings. And uh, now we'll get to the lathe. I'll just prepare the blanks uh, and uh, we'll set off. Okay, so here we are at the lathe. Uh, this is some uh, piece of ash I found uh, as a spindle blank. Um, now I hope I won't forget uh, to uh, press again record after eight minutes. Uh, I shoot in 4k so um, Later in edit I can zoom in so you can see a little bit better how tools are working. So uh, Let's start out with uh, uh, Spindle roughing gouge. So that's the big U1. Spindle roughing gouge So you just have to find the sweet spot with it. So if I go above rotation, I'm keeping the, the flute. So this bottom portion here is, let's say, a parallel to the tool rest here. And raise the handle as you start to come in. You can see this lays down um, uh, side grain fibers really well. Uh, if I would go from the end grain here, uh, then it will catch on the, that end grain because of this curved edge and so much of it exposed. And uh, same principle stuff happens on a, on a ball blank since we have more end grain than side grain. So. And I always go like this, so you see from this down here, scoop like so. I don't start from the middle because you will get sort of dig in here. You can go lightly like so, but then you have to move all the, a lot. 
So what I like to do is just pull. Like so. So that's spindle wrapping gouge. Uh, this is regular, uh, this is detail gouge. So it's a little bit different, but same procedure. Obviously not the best tool for the job, but it can be done. And uh, these are now continental uh, spindle gouges. This is uh, my old one. You can see where from the portion of the curve of the edge, it's taking also, watch here. So I'm laying down these uh, fibers, the side grain, pretty much uh, almost close as the spindle wrapping gouge. But I much more prefer these continental gouges than to have um, spindle wrapping gouge, uh, just because these are much more versatile. You can roll beads with it, cut holes. So if you watch old videos, there is a, a wood turner, old video, old wood turner uh, from Dachau in, I believe in Germany. Um, and uh, you'll see in the video uh, on YouTube actually, um, how he uses continental spindle gouges. And like I said, these are gouges that I've uh, learned my, my, my work, my trade. So, this is now the, the big one. So again, same procedure, but much more stable. You can see this portion taking off quite nicely. Again, with this one you can, it's a quite versatile tool, so you can roll beads. It doesn't have quite long points, so it's much harder to get in the corner, but you can roll cove as well. And it can face end grain as well. So. which is major difference. Whoops. Major difference between spindle wrapping gouge. There we go. So you can see that's really nice and clean. Yeah, but you can use the wing here as a skew as well. It's just a little different angle again i'm approaching the the wood at around 45 degrees you can see how that works quite nice And again, I'm riding the bevel here. So now it's much smoother. As we'll see here, this portion. So that's pretty much finished spindle. So I'll just grab a little uh, cross grain uh, blank so we can see what's happening there. Here I have a blank of um, Norway maple and uh, just going to pop it in, expand uh, the jaws a little bit so that's all nice and tight. 
uh, I, I cannot stress enough that this one, the spindle roughing gouge with the big U, is not to be used uh, on cross grain work like this uh, for bowls, uh, cross grain boxes, and uh, stuff like that. However, uh, you can use a regular spindle gouges. Uh, this is uh, uh, a detail, sorry, lost my tra trail of thought. Uh, spindle, a detail spindle gouge and continental gouges. And I'll actually grab a regular uh, that it's not a detail gouge. So this one here, uh, you can see, maybe I'll try to show it to you. It's a little bit deeper flute there we go so to uh, closer to you is a detail gouge uh, which has a shallower flute and much more heft down here and uh, regular spindle gouge has um, much deeper uh, flute so um, you can shape the outside of this ball blank so again this is the regular spindle gouge uh, to approach with any spindle gouge you have to turn it on its side so let's say 10 o'clock um, is the the sweet spot if you present the tool like so uh, with the foot facing the 12 o'clock you'll get a nasty catch here because this is unsupported and it will roll on you uh, so uh, if I'm using just to the left of the point, I can get away to maybe have it at 10.30, uh, maybe a little closer to 11, like so. You can see this works extremely well without much effort. This is why I really like to use spindle gouges for bowls. It's such a joy to, to use. Um, this is the detail gouge. Same principle. I can flatten a little bit here. You can see I'm not fighting the tool. Here as well, if I roll it and the uh, wood catches on this unsupported edge, it will bang over and it won't be pleasant at all. So. Keep it on its side as you start to enter the wood, roll it slightly so you're cutting with this portion here, over here, just to the left of the, of the point, but no further back. And you can see this goes in quite beautifully. Again, we can shape with, uh, even with the detail gouge. Without much effort, just have to be aware that there is a recess inside here. So that's roughing cuts. We can make a nice clean cut. So the camera shut off. So. Uh, Again, we can make a nice clean cut. Again, as here, just use to the side of the very point. You can see that's really nice, really nice ribbons. That's pretty good surface. And um, I can go with, uh, just see how much wood I have here. So I still have a little bit more. Um, so this is the big one, big spindle gouge. And again, I tilt it up on its side. Uh, I don't use it uh, like laying flat down so the foot is facing to 12 o'clock. You can maybe a little bit get like so, but that's really inefficient a way of cutting. Uh, it's basically like a scraper, so just Tilt it up on edge a little bit like the flute now is facing around 10 o'clock. I'm using uh, from the point down the edge. You can see that works extremely well. Again, here. So 
so these were used like I said a lot before and you can cut the tenon this is obviously a little maybe too big but that's why I have this smaller one which I make a few dozen bowls when I start out so again and we can make a nice clean cut Okay, so that was a little knocking sound here. I think I'm right there <laughs> with uh, the groove inside where I expand the jaws. Just see if I went through anywhere. No. So I can flip this around and I can show you what's happening on the inside. Okay, so now I position the camera so you can see what's happening uh, for the inside. Uh, this is where you get more strength out of a round stock uh, like this with the shaft uh, or even better the the strength of the bow gouges um, now this big one if this is still uh, solid I would use I could use this one here it's you can see really tricky and um, I hope you can see that this portion here it's much much easier to cut uh, when you're inside of the bowl and when that happens so like so it wants to drag the the gouge underneath uh, the tool rest and it's quite violent so this is way too broad of an edge uh, or too big of a tool to, to use now I could use this smaller one this uh, which will get the job done here this one is much easier uh, since it doesn't have all that broad edge uh, to get the inside so I can first throw up the rim here like so uh, if you close the flute and drop the handle you can use it as a, a shear scraper as well like so and again start here Close the wood. Once you enter the wood, lightly open it up. Not by much, because you see lovely shavings, ribbons of shavings, and it's quite clean cut. However, it's but uh, you can see here it's actually quite clean cut quite big shavings, lovely shavings. It's a clean cut, uh, but you just have to work a lot with this and uh, there is a better tools for the inside, especially um, especially like bow gouges. Uh, you can use regular spindle gouge, it's much easier since we have more of a point uh, than a broad uh, curl, a cur curved uh, shape like this one. So, Here you are mostly dictated by the, the, the angle here on the spindle gouge uh, if it will allow you to go all the way down or partially down so this is again nice clean because this is around 35 degrees on the nose so you can get a nice uh, shearing cut here and uh, it's a quite clean cut so there are better tools uh, for the job Something like a bow gouge is much much stronger, easier to use, to control. There we go, so that's pretty much one cut 
and uh, again you can still have uh, quite a big catches uh, inside with the ball gouge but um, it's much easier to to get it with this kind of big uh, gouge here uh, with this kind of broad curved edge um, so you can see this is quite nice I hope you like this first of many videos to come uh, about specific tools and uh, uh, I hope I clarified a little bit at least uh, why some of the gouges, spindle gouges, are okay to use on a cross grain work and uh, some uh, they are by any means are not allowed anywhere near uh, cross grain work. So, um, like I said, I hope you like this first of many uh, specific tools uh, videos and um, I really look forward to skill. I hope uh, I'm going to uh, change your mind and uh, uh, like get rid of the fear of skills for you and uh, uh, to, to make you more and more use the skill and scraper standard and uh, I'm maybe going to convert one to negative rake just to, to show you how I would go about making that as well. So uh, a lot more to come, so uh, stay tuned, subscribe if, please if you haven't, uh, hit the thumbs up, everything helps to, to promote the video and uh, to, to make more videos as well. So uh, see you in the next one.